Binge watch and learn on TRS Clips. Teach us all about Chola Empire. So the Chola Empire is, uh, you know, firstly it was an empire with several kings, and it started somewhere in around the middle of the ninth century, eight fifty. There was a king called Vijayalaya Chola who first set up the empire. There Did were there were Cholas before him, but he is the one who really set up a capital, started the empire. What's his origin story? Tough guy. He is a tough guy, quite maneuvering guy. He played the Pandyas against the Pallavas and gained a foothold in that region uh, on the Kaveri sure. uh, area. And slowly set up. He was only a chieftain. Then slowly became a. Uh, he was given land and and all that. And finally defeated the Pallavas, who with whom we was dealing all the time. Whom he was helping in the war, so first uh, he defeated the Pandyas with the Pallavas uh, as the bigger power. Mm. Pallavas got weakened, Pandyas got wiped out. So then Vijayalaya Chola set up the empire, and that is how empires are set up, right? It's just you keep watching where to, you know, what is abiding for your time. What happened to the Pallavas? Completely wiped out. Pallavas got completely wiped out. As in they were killed. the yeah, the last king was killed uh, and after that they became um chieftains to the chola empire okay right there mm-hmm. was there was a line after that but they were all uh, sort of small they were given small parcels of land sure. and they were called pallava kings but really they were not kings it was the chola empire dominating everywhere so these after 850 So came a set of kings and finally Raja Raja Chola. He came became emperor. It's one his, bloodline. Like it's the, one bloodline, yeah. Okay. Father and all that, okay. and and cousins and things like and that, uncles and you know. They married Tamil girls or they married like people from outside they as well. They married uh, people from the surrounding region, not 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 uh, North Indian girls. Why? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they got any any. <laughs> um so there was certainly not a rajasthani girl or uh, or, or even a oriya girl okay uh, i could say that he had about 15 wives because that is the time when uh, kings have minimum 15 wives because uh, political yeah, they have to make political deals and But all 15 were from southern states were from the southern uh, states yeah north uh, west Slightly, what, yeah. slightly. What, what, sir? Right. <laughs> uh, maybe one from Lanka. I don't know. Lanka. Uh, what was happening? Lanka in... was anyway his territory. You know, they conquered Lanka also. What was happening in Lanka at that time? There was like separate kingdoms and all. Yeah, Lanka has always been separate. Has a separate history. Never really part of India. Mm. Though the southern kings uh, captured Lanka and kept Lanka for. Maybe even hundred years, right? Sure. The Cholas had uh, dominated Lanka for almost a hundred years. So, but still, it was uh, a kingdom of, on its own, and then later on became independent. And uh, so that is again a story of how kings capture other lands. Uh, Raja Raja Chola uh, went to Lanka, destroyed a city called Anuradha Pura. It was a very ancient city there. Set up his own capital. and started ruling and his son and grandson ruled for quite a while till a lankan king came back and reclaimed that one second so we got to rewind a little bit what was the first chola king's name vijay vijay vijayalaya vijayalaya yeah so after him all his sons and descendants right. just kept making the empire more powerful more powerful they expanded in terms of land yeah and i'm assuming they focused on agriculture made money right. focused on technology to defend themselves etc yeah. so progressively it's getting stronger When does Raja Raja Chola appear? Yeah, he is uh, like I said, uh, he was a prince, okay, and uh, he's really in nine eighty five he became a king. Nine eighty five. Yeah. Okay, that so that's like almost end of tenth century. One thirty five years after uh, Vijayala. Vijayala. All right, that's right. So and four, then three, four uh, generations. He died in thousand fifteen, and uh, his son took over Rajendra, and so on. Okay. That's a long so, tenure, very long tenure among the among the longest empires. Maybe 
you know, even longer than the Mauryan Empire. Maybe as long as the Mughal Empire, I, I really don't know. But it was a very long empire mm. and uh, <clears throat> some three centuries together and they held it together. Right. Very powerful, almost uh, south of Narmada, the territory belonged to them. Why is Raja Raja Chola the hero in this whole Chola dynasty story? Yeah, in spite of all these kings, it is he, when he came to power, actually expanded the Chola empire to almost the maximum. All others who came later used that dominant position. But he was the one who waged wars across, you know, left and right, north and south. Aggressive guy. Aggressive guy. Every year, he, every month, every year he went and subdued somebody or other. He, whole of Kerala, he brought under his rule. He, whole of Andhra, he brought under his rule. Lanka, he brought under his rule. Sent a emissary or a commission to China. Started trade with uh, this, uh, all this Southeast Asian empires. You know, so, the, these are the kind of historical figures I find fascinating because even when you talk about someone like Vijayala, you said that he had a few schemes and plots he ran with the Pallavas and Pandyas. So it's usually the same story about how someone ascends to power. Yes. But then when a prince is already born in a palace with a kingdom around him, how does that prince become aggressive enough or ambitious enough to expand more? What's gone on his in his childhood? Yeah, that is true. Like he had a, a definitely an empire already there. But then uh, the Cholas also went, went through lots of ups and downs. Okay. And uh, by that time his dad was there. And uh, before that, they had lost quite a bit of territory. Because the northern, uh, the Chalukyans oh. and uh, the other uh, kings called the Rashtrakutas. So they got together and started getting into Chola territory. Gotcha. So... In between a little bit, it it uh, sort of contracted. But when he came to power, Raja Raja, and in fact, even before coming to power, as a prince, he had gone to the battlefield and, you know, so he's uh, quite a warrior and uh, he has uh, many battles to speak about. So war-oriented. So by that time, war-oriented. He built a war machinery, he built a shipbuilding industry, industry, and all these other industries also flourished, um, textiles and all, trade expanded. Uh, he captured all the, some of the Western ports also, like the Kerala, the Muziris, which you might have heard, one of the oldest ports. These ports are all active uh, right from the Roman Empire and before, mm. when the Greeks came. Like when mm. uh, Alexander was invading the north, his ships were doing trade the Greek ships had come to the south. Got so that part of the sea was mastered by both, you know. And imagine ships going such long distances, you know. Mm. And then after a long period, you hear Columbus starting, uh, you know, to discover India and getting lost. Mm. So, but these people, the seafarers, had already mastered the sea. And they knew they were just going from the western coast of India to Africa, like, you know, every month you make a trip and decide from the eastern coast ports, they go to the southeast Asian countries. So it was like, like um, a trade route, a well-established trade route, child's play for them to go to these countries and come back. What was the logic behind going to Southeast Asia? But Because I don't think any other Indian emperor has truly thought of that. Everyone was just on the subcontinent. Some... Info would have been in, I'm assuming it was Raja Raja Chola who expanded to Southeast Asia. Yeah, his son, Rajendra. His son. Yeah. Okay, so probably the father takes over his area and the surrounding set areas. The, set up for the son. And he told know. the son that, you know, I'm better than you. You won't amount to anything in life. The son had daddy issues. So said, you know what? I'm going to yeah. expand into that other country I have as to well. Do this. You have conquered everything in the land. Now I have to go across the sea. You know, that's right. So, sorry, father had done the work. I'm getting All emotional. So. Yeah. Sorry, I'm kidding. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> yeah. So, the sun started, you know, uh, expanding the fleet further. But what, uh, what existed in like Indonesia and Malaysia and all these places back then? See, they were trading with, uh, they were also trading nations. There was one Sri Vijaya empire there. And uh, I don't know before that, there were empires. And, uh, you know, it was a sort of a prosperous region. Okay. Right? 
they had their own uh, thing and they were uh, dealing a lot with china and china right. being you know bigger power than india and you know or at least as big a power as india was trading left and right with all the countries even at that period in time there was a silk route so it's a huge empire resources big market so the southeast asians were dealing with them the southern kings wanted to have a slice of that pie you know we keep talking about european imperialism how european countries went and colonized other countries here's an example of indian imperialism yes only except that uh, they conquered the trade routes and they really didn't make them colonies the british came here and made this a colony and then you know they were here for some 250 years but the none of these indian kings really went even lanka for that matter mm they didn't conquer it they didn't colonize it they were there for a while and it was a military expedition no doubt but uh, same with chinese you know they didn't go and colonize uh, other countries they sent they had huge fleets they sent ships in hundreds and thousands but then all that they were bothered about was conquering the trade routes not the foreign colonies <clears throat> india is different india they considered as you know my country mm. i can conquer i can colonize it but not outside okay so there was some kind of probably a rule some do you think there was a religious angle that expand hinduism into these countries because where uh, do all these uh, temples in bali and all that come from uh i would say see religion is always there because when a king conquers a country they impose their philosophy their religion their culture everything they impose like that is why i was talking about the british earlier when you conquer some somebody you have to conquer their mind is not enough to conquer their land or their you know physical assets you have to conquer their mind but the indians the at least the chola empire there's not much evidence they went and built they had this trade relations they sent their army no doubt they defeated them in a war they put up their own uh, sort of uh, what you call their puppets there to control that market and in that process lot of tamilians and lot of indians also settled there oh okay you know the traders mm. like the way the greeks settled in tamil nadu and you know there were colonies of greeks walking right in the market and talking in greek tamilian must have walked there in the market and talked tamil mm. and built on temple like the way tamilians build temples in the us now so they must have built their temples there that sculpture and all that but today and even at that time the dominant religion there is buddhism you know and that went from india and that did not get sort of imposed by a king ashoka had sent all this even his own son and daughter he sent to spread buddhism he sent uh, emissaries to all the countries but he was not directly controlling any country to impose a religion sure. it just became popular by itself mm. so much so that today we don't have that much buddhism and jainism in uh, the country but you have other countries which are buddhist mm. countries you know outside india who had nothing to do with when buddha was alive so trs clips has all sorts of videos and all sorts of playlists make sure you explore the channel by subscribing and heading to our home page reading through all the playlists happens through